Hi everybody, it's Sam here. Thank you for watching today. So I've got a fun fold card to share with you. This one actually went completely differently to the way I'd planned. It was meant to be inside a gatefold card and it had evolved from the cascading gatefold card, but straight. And then I was going to cut an aperture into the front here. But like I said, that went wrong. But what did evolve was this here. And I'm really pleased with this. And then this piece, I'm going to change the size in the one that I make in a moment because this one catches slightly. But you'll see you get this floating winged kind of cascading concertina accordion card i'm not entirely sure what to call it yet but it's really nice i'm thoroughly pleased with how this one turned out and then on the back you've got space there to write your message and loads of space there to decorate you know however you want and then i like that it folds you just pop that that way folds and fits into a six by six envelope now today's video is sponsored very kindly by Craft Label and I'm using the beautiful oh so sweet papers to make this card today. If you're unaware of Craft Label I will link their website below but they have heaps of brands over there so they have their own brands and then they also have American Crafts, Thermaweb, We Are Memory Keepers, Spellbinders, that's just to name a few and they also have Cricut. They have a massive catalogue of Cricut products including the brand new Cricut Maker 3. So if there are any digital crafters watching go check it out because there's so much good stuff over there. I purchase from Craft Label regularly. I love their own brand product and they have really good prices. They have very kindly given me a 15% off discount code, which is popping up now and it's SAM15CDE. So that's all the housekeeping done. So let me show you how to make this really fun card. So this is the first edition Oh So Sweet paper. I have used this on a gift bag already and I did do a, what did I get video? Showing this in more detail. So I know lots of you would have already seen it, but I love the first edition paper. They're just always so nice. OK, so first of all, you're going to want two pieces of 12 by 6. Now, if you don't have 12 inch cardstock, you can use your letter paper size or your A4 length. If you're using A4 length, then I would suggest that you, which usually comes in around 11 and three quarters, I would score along the long side at five and seven eighths of an inch and make sure you cut it so that it's five and seven eighths of an inch and then you'll be able to make this. And if you have letter paper size, yours would be 11. So I would score at five and a half and make sure it's five and a half deep. And you'll still be able to make this card. You'll have to change your mats and layers accordingly, but that just gives you the basic card shape. So with both pieces, if you've got the 12, you're just gonna score at six inches down through the middle and then where I told you to score on those other sizes. So I've already gone and scored those ones there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to score. You could use a pencil if you want, but I think it's fine just to use um, a stylus. You then want to find the halfway mark between the first square. So for those of you using those other sizes I've given you, just find your halfway. Because this is the six inch piece, I'm going to just score there at three and I'm going to score down just over halfway. So score all the way down. I can see my three inch marker here and I'm just going to go a little bit past it. OK, and then on this one here, because this is just a score line for me to cut up. I'm just going to flip it and then I'm going to score at nine again down just past the three inch marker. So I've got my three inches there just a little bit past. OK, so you'll see you've got your centre score line and then you've got a score line here just over halfway. And then this one comes up just over halfway. You want to repeat that on the other piece. OK, and then you're going to cut up both of the score lines and you want to remove the score line. So I'm cutting slightly to the right of this one, right the way down there and then to the left. And I'm just removing the score line there and just drawing it at the top. So you can see what I've just cut away there and how that piece looks. So then I'm just going to flip this one round and do the same. And you want to repeat that on the second piece as well. OK, so now you should have two pieces like this and you'll have that score line in the middle. I'm just going to fold and burnish the score line there. So you'll have your two pieces like this. OK, you want to turn one over so they're opposite. So this one has the slit at the top and this one has it coming up from the bottom. And you're going to slot that one into there and get this one into there as well. Just get them both in and then you can line them up like so and then when you open it up you have your card 
Okay, now if you want to keep it like this and not have an opening, then all you want to do now is cover this with your mats and layers, your sentiment and decorate it however you want. One little tip I would suggest, if you're going to decorate with anything that's going to overlap into, you know, either space, remember that when you close this flat, it might poke out the side and then it wouldn't fit into your envelope. So just be mindful of however you're going to decorate this. Now, I also think it looked really nice with some of my edge dies. So you could have your decorative edges here. And you can imagine when that's folded like this, you'll see that lovely decorative um, detail. But what I want to do is I want to cut an aperture into here. So first of all, I think it's best to decorate. So first of all, you want to decorate the two panels in the middle on the front. So that for me is these ones here. So I'm going to have this lovely pearlized pattern paper. and I'm going to stick this down using my all purpose Kalau glue. And then I'm going to cut the aperture into this. OK, next I've got my circle dies. You can use any circle dies. I just liked the little dot detail that these had. So I'll give you the measurements. So I'm going to do that one first. And then I'd already gone ahead and cut the next size up with the original one. And then that gives me my frame here. OK, this circle is roughly something with a diameter. I've got four and a quarter there. So I'm just going to lay this down in the middle. You can have it a bit higher up if you want. But I'm going to pop it in the middle, lay a bit of tape down and just run that through my machine. So that's cut away perfectly. And now I'm going to attach my frame. So I'm just going to run a little bit of my quick grab glue around here and then just sit that one down. So it lines up perfectly like so. And then you can fold it in half and just pinch the fold there. It's never going to lay flat. So it's always going to be now in that position because even when it folds flat, you'll have the other one over there. That's how it will be in the envelope. And when it opens up, it's only ever going to go to about there. So it works really well with the frame stuck on it. Next, you need to start thinking about where you're going to have your other pattern papers. So it might be easier if you pop it kind of back together and then you can kind of start laying the other pattern papers in. As you can see it's starting to look really good there. So I then want the striped pattern I just need to mix these up a bit, but I did have it so that the pattern, there we go. So those two sit, you know, they were from that original piece. So they're going to go in the back here. So I'm going to now take this off and I'm going to stick those two down in here. I need to trim them actually. You can see now how that's going to look. And then again, just pop them in here. So I next I want for me, I'm going to have another stripe here because I want that stripe to continue on the, the kind of the back pieces. So although this isn't the back piece, it will go onto the back. So I'm going to have that one here. Again, I need to trim these, obviously miss these ones. That one's going to go on that side and then this one's going to go on that side. So I've stuck those down, just popped it back together again. So you can see now I've got the stripes all along the back and then I want to add the polka dot now onto the front. So those are going to go there. So you can see now how that's all starting to take shape. Next, you want to add your piece on the back for your floating sentiment. So you want to cut yourself a strip that is half an inch by five. And along the five inch side, you're going to score at half an inch, two and a half and four and a half. So you can see there, half an inch, two and a half and four and a half. You then want to fold all of the score lines so they're all mountain folds and then you'll have something like this. Make sure your card all lines up and you're going to stick this into here. Now it's easiest if you fold it flat with those side ones folded under and you want to line up that score line with the middle of the card and then and make sure it's in the middle of your circle or whatever shape it is that you're using. So I'm just going to grab some of my quick grab glue pop it on each of those squares and then just again line up the score line and just fold those. You can wiggle it around a little bit if you need to like so and now when you open up the card you can see that piece pops out. Now that's not going to stick onto there and pop out how we would want it to. So I've then cut this piece here, which is how I always like to add 
my sentiments if I've got a corner that I'm attaching it to. So this piece here is half an inch by three and you want to score at half an inch, one inch, two inches and two and a half. And then you're going to fold the two outer score lines, so they're valleys, and then the two inner score lines, so they're mountains. What will happen is these pieces will be able to fit behind that section there. That's the section we're going to add glue and then add our topper. So what we want to do is pop glue onto the backs of these squares. And then you want to stick, you want to kind of keep it closed like this. And where they join, they need to sit either side of that score line. So I'm going to sit this down and then I'll hold it up so you can see. Like so. Can you see now that when that pops out, that piece is like that. So again, if I try and bring that up there, you can see. So just the two squares are stuck onto that bar that sticks out. So now I've already stamped and embossed my sentiment, have a sweet birthday, which is from my baked, no, my sweets and treats um, stamp set. And I'm gonna pop some foam and then back that onto this one. These were some old dies that I've had for a while. And then that will stick onto there and just make sure you've got a nice equal frame. Okay, so that's stuck down. And what I did with this one is I've made this bar bigger, just slightly, so that when this closes, it doesn't catch, because on that one that I showed you before, it does slightly catch. Next, I'm going to decorate my side panels. So I've fussy cut these lovely images from one of the pages. So the good thing is when you buy the 12 by 12 pads, you get the images much bigger, so they're nice for fussy cutting and then using as a decoration. So I've got the bowl there, and I've done two of everything. I've got the little whisk. I'm going to have a bowl on either side. I'm going to pop these all on some foam so there's a bit of dimension. We've got the little oven glove there and then we've got the heart and then the whisk. It's going to be outside the bowl so you see it. And then that one there. So I'm going to get that all stuck down. Okay, so that's the front all decorated. And then you just want to decorate the back. So I've already gone ahead and stamped this one here. Again, this is from my Sweets and Treats stamp set. Keep calm and eat the sweets. So that one's going to go there. And then I have these spare pieces. So I think, yeah, it was the floral ones because I had three of those. So I'm going to pop that one there, that one there, and that one there. So that's that all stuck down. Next, you want to push your circle to one side and fold the card flat. This is going to be the front for me. So then I want to cover it with the other pieces now again let's make sure i get this the right way because i'm sure i cut them ah there it is so i just need to trim that one down a little bit and then flip it over and i've got my other one for here oh oh no that one's gonna be that's the back so we're just we we'll pretend that one um you know you don't see that one but just get those both stuck down again they will be the two and three quarters by five and three quarters like i said you may want to decorate and do more with the front but i deliberately am keeping mine plain so that then it encourages them to investigate the card more and then start to open it and then you might just have to kind of move that so it pops back out to the front but you get that really cool design with that floating element in the middle you could also have a spinning piece if you wanted to have something maybe hanging from the front you might have a scene you could do the bars could be further down along the bottom and you could have little animals in there you may want to make you could do it as an underwater scene so you you know if any of you've got my kit you could definitely do that this could be like the porthole that you're looking into you could also do the woodland scene. So if you've got any of my woodland animals, I'm plugging all of my collections here, of course. But you get the idea. You could really, you know, do a lot more with the inside of that. I could see this working really well for a Christmas card. It's definitely got the showstopper feel. So I'm going to add this to my showstopper playlist. So if you're new to the channel, check on the playlist that's popping down now because there are heaps of those real big special cards, mantle pleasers, perfect for sweet 16th, 21st and all your other ages, as well as weddings and, you know, anniversaries, engagements and things like that. But I think this has turned out really nice. Like I said, just push one side and then the whole card will fold flat and that's now ready for me to pop in the envelope. And then you have that space on the back. You may want to have plain panels on all four. Again, if it's maybe for a work colleague, 
it's a wedding card from colleagues in work you've got all that space for everybody to be able to you know write their name and their message and they could also you know do the back to here it's entirely up to you and like i said again just pop that in there and it all folds flat so i hope you've enjoyed this fun fold card from me today check out craft label again i'll share all the links in the description box below remember you get your 15 percent off that's valid for two months that code which again is sam so sam 15 c d e and be sure to check out all the other fun things that they have also that discount code is only valid on own brand product full price only You'll know if it doesn't work because it won't work when you go um, to check out. Just make sure it's the own brand product. Again, I'll list all the, the kind of like T's and C's in the description box below. And uh, yeah, enjoy using your discount code. Thank you, as always, to Craft Label for sending me this wonderful paper pad. It's so nice. Really enjoyed making these ones. Thanks for watching and I'll be back again soon. Bye.